this is Dr. Hayek and this video is about thermochemistry. Our topic for today is the nature of energy. So before I start this video, I will represent the outline of this chapter where we will have a total of three videos. Please refer to one of these videos for the topic of interest. Now, energy is defined as the capacity to do work or to produce heat. Under energy, we will study three important topics, which are the law of conservation of energy, potential energy, and kinetic energy. The law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but can be interconverted from one form to another. However, potential energy by definition is the energy possessed by an object or a system due to its position or its composition. A potential energy due to the position, it's like water behind a dam, or the energy or the potential energy stored in the bonds for chemical reactions before combustions. And finally, kinetic energy is the energy due to motion. Let's discuss this example where we have the blue ball at a higher position than the red ball. Now the blue ball possesses potential energy due to its position. Now if the blue ball rolls down the hill, it's going to transfer some of its energy to the red ball and therefore the red ball will be able to go to a higher level. However, the level reached by the red ball is going to be lower than the initial level of the blue ball and this is due to the loss of energy from the blue ball due to the friction with the surface. So this energy produces heat and it's called frictional energy. Now the red ball went from the initial position to the final position and this is using some of the transferred energy as a kinetic energy from the blue ball to the red ball and this could be also called work. So work by definition is the force acting over a distance. The pathway determines how much energy will be transferred as heat or work. Rough surfaces will increase friction and therefore more energy will be transferred as heat. Before we continue further discussing energy, we need to define two important parts of the universe which are the system and the surroundings. The system, this is where we focus. So if we have a chemical reaction, our system would be the reactants and the products. And in this case, the surroundings will be the reaction vessel and everything else. Now, since we are studying chemistry and our system will always be a chemical reaction, so we will define the chemical energy. The chemical energy, it could be of three types. It could be exothermic, athermic, or endothermic. We will define each term. Exothermic means that there is a transfer of energy from the system to the surroundings. So the system is losing energy to the surroundings. The surroundings is gaining energy from the system. Athermic means that there is no energy exchange between the system and the surroundings. And finally, endothermic means that the system is gaining energy from the surroundings. Therefore, the surroundings is losing energy to the system. So let's discuss now the combustion of methane, which is an exothermic reaction, and therefore it's going to produce heat. As you can see, energy or heat, it's part of the product. In this case, what's happening, the system is losing energy or the energy is being transferred from the system to the surroundings. Why would this happen? If we look at the energy diagram of the reactants and the products, we can see that the potential energy of the reactants is higher than the potential energy of the products. Now the potential energy is stored in the bonds. Now, during the process of the combustion of methane, we have bond breaking and bond forming, and therefore, since the potential energy of the reactants is less than the potential energy of the products, some of the energy will be released to the outside. In a similar way, we can discuss endothermic reactions. For this example, we will take the reaction between nitrogen and oxygen, which needs heat or energy to produce the nitrogen monoxide. 
what's going to happen in this case there will be an energy transfer from the surroundings to the system and if we look again at the energy diagram we can see that the products have higher potential energy than the reactants so reactants will not be converted into products unless they receive more energy to take them from a lower energy level to a higher energy level now the first law of thermodynamics states that the energy of the universe is conserved is constant now the internal energy could be defined as the sum of work plus heat so delta e which is equal to w plus q where w is work q is heat the exchange of energy between the surroundings and the system determines the sign of delta e so for example for exothermic reactions the sign of delta e will be negative and for endothermic reactions delta e will be positive so now when we say exothermic or endothermic we are talking about heat so when heat enters the system this means that the reaction is endothermic and therefore delta e is positive and when heat leaves the system this means delta e is negative because this is an exothermic process now let's discuss the signs of work and heat depending on the energy exchange between the system and the surroundings so as an example if heat is lost which means that heat is getting transferred from the system to the surroundings Q will be negative now this is negative because from the point of view of the system the system lost heat and this is a negative entity if work is done by the system also from the point of view of the system system is losing energy and therefore work is negative now if heat is gained by the system so heat will be positive and if work is done on the system in this case work will also be positive now as I have mentioned earlier that work is defined as the force acting over a distance so therefore the absolute value of work is equal to the force multiplied by the distance let's consider the following cylinder equipped with a piston that contains a gas from inside if we apply pressure on the piston the volume will decrease the pressure applied it's equal to the force applied divided by the area or the surface area now the piston will move a distance d so this is the d that is included in the work expression now if we rearrange the expression p equals to force divided by a we get force is equal to pressure multiplied by the surface area now taking into consideration these two expressions we get that the absolute value of work is equal to pressure multiplied by the surface area multiplied by the distance now the surface area multiplied by the distance represents the volume change of the gas and therefore delta V is equal to A multiplied by D replacing A multiplied by D in the expression of work we get the absolute value of work it's equal to pressure multiplied by Delta V now remember we have said that if work is done on the system this means that work is positive however because we have applied more pressure on the piston we decreased the volume of the gas and therefore Delta V is negative in a similar way we can think about what if work is done by the system work has to be negative and delta v will be positive because the volume will increase because the gas will expand so how can we correct the expression work is equal to pressure multiplied by delta v since they have opposite signs we can now remove the absolute value and say work is equal to minus pressure multiplied by delta V now of course when you look at this expression the answer will be in liter atmosphere 
How to convert liter atmosphere to joule? You can simply use the following relationship, which is one liter atmosphere is equal to 101.3 joule, since energy has to be expressed in the unit of joules. I hope this video was helpful to you, so please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.